Caddis Maximus here, this time with a pretty minimal power tool. It's the Black & Decker AS600 Quad Alkaline. <laughs> right there. AA powered electric screwdriver. This is a pretty basic screwdriver and it's actually pretty weak. I have a Skill IXO here and this thing probably has 50% more power. No way I'm going to stop the spindle with my own fingers. And that's actually because a 18650 lithium ion battery, something like this that's inside there, a battery like this, even this cheesy one, uh, this doesn't say the amperage, but these kind of batteries can push 20 amps or more. They can actually push quite a bit of wattage. Unfortunately, a AA battery, uh, alkaline, cannot push 20 amps. And so that's one of the main reasons why this is so weak. But they thought about that. This was a cheesy product. This is like a $10 product. This has a little slide out thing, little contacts there. I do have brand new batteries in it. This lower part of the case just kind of snaps together and then the gearbox slides over the top and then uses this clip. I actually have a little notch there to pull out the clip. I thought that was kind of interesting. So part of the budget was them. As you can tell, it doesn't have a lock or a Sprague clutch, a one-way clutch, or something like uh, on a, a little bit more expensive like this Skill has a one uh, a Sprague clutch, kind of like a one-way bearing, so it automatically locks. When power is driven through via the motor, it spins. But if you try to drive it backwards, meaning turning the spindle to try to drive the motor, that Sprague clutch will lock up. That's how you break screws with this. This thing, apparently a Sprague clutch is too expensive, so they have this odd little collar here. Put it in the manual mode, and it locks up the spindle, and you can break screws. This can be handy just because, especially if you, I mean, it's really wasteful uh, if you're buying disposable batteries. It's incredibly wasteful. You have to get something rechargeable uh, <laughs> if you're using it regularly. If you have rechargeable alkaline batteries, and modern nickel metal hydrides actually push out quite a bit of amps. I should have dug some up and charged some. Uh, but I decided not to. It's such a cheesy screwdriver. You may get a little bit more torque out of it, but you definitely need rechargeable batteries. Because there's no way you'd be running an electric screwdriver on disposable batteries. That would be obscene. Batteries are super... Alkaline batteries have gotten really expensive. And, I mean, I guess they're not so bad like Harbor Freight. But it doesn't matter because if you're using an electric screwdriver a lot... You're going to be dumping out a lot of batteries, and those dollars will quickly add up, and you needing you the same cost as something that's a lot better and rechargeable. That being said, well, I can, I've seen a few of these. I finally said, okay, I'm going to review one. We have a double button system here, so you can just kind of hold it and press it like that, or grab it and hold it with your finger. So actually, I don't mind the ergonomics. The oblong shape, actually, I don't mind either, because when you're breaking screws... That shape gives you just a better purchase, a bit of a better grip, and you can really get quite a bit of torque on it. And to tell you the truth, the whole body and everything else seems pretty darn tight. The spindle is actually reasonably tight in it as well. Enough about that. Let's uh, just do a little demonstration. It is designed for a bit deeper bits, which I'm surprised. You can see how this one inch bit sinks in pretty far. You can still use them, but I was, actually, once again, a little surprised that they use such a deep set spindle. We're going to see how far this can drive this wood screw, and then I'll see how much further I can drive it with the little skill. Come on now. Only 130 RPM, so we're not talking... Okay, I'm going to fry the motor if I continue to run it like that. And doing that kind of heavy-duty screwing, I mean, you'll probably get five minutes out of a set of alkalines. Let's just see how much further the little skill... Actually, I probably won't drive it until the skill saw is out, but I'll just show you how much more power this little skill has. I mean, it's not a little bit. The skill has a lot more power. probably somewhere in the neighborhood of twice the power anyway let's take this apart see what we have i know that the 
There we go. I know that the skill comes with plastic gears on the, it has a two stage transmission, metal gear on the motor, plastic planetary gears on the first stage, metal planetary gears on the second stage, but they're identical. I've actually found two of these skills and so I took them apart and stole the metal gears out of one to upgrade this one to all metal planetary gears. So that's why it sounds uh, just a bit more gear noisy than say this one. Actually that skill only being 3.6 volts, a single lithium ion cell versus the six volts of this is well over twice the power I forgot to consider. This is 130 RPM, that skill was 200 RPM and delivered twice the power having a lower gear ratio. So this thing, and I can see why people donate them, they just, it huffs down batteries and doesn't, it hardly gives you any power uh, for all that battery that it sucks down. Surprisingly enough, really easy to pull off this gearbox. You just pull out the staple. And we'll pull out our gears here. Try to frame this up a little bit better. So that motor, there it is. Oh, there's a little shelf. So we do have a centered metal uh, primary gear on the motor. Of course, this won't have any ball bearings on it. Once again, these two case halves are... Uh, snap together and I don't want to break the snaps trying to take it apart and the reason you I would break them is you can see the snaps are actually they have these kind of plastic bosses which kind of help uh, align and keep the whoop keep the battery tray from wanting to fall or to rattle around or get too loose it is keyed so you can't put the battery tray in wrong but the problem is is there's no way to get like a screwdriver or something in there to try to lift the tabs in order to get it to come apart. I just have to rip it apart and most likely destroy it. Which is not something I really want to do with this quite yet. I know it's a cheesy tool, but nonetheless. Anyway, where are my pliers? Let's take a look at the gears. Kind of an interesting gold color for that washer. We indeed have plastic primary stage gears. Let's pull those out. Come on now. Pop that one out. There's a first stage. So we do have a planetary. Oh my goodness. That is cheap. That carriage, you can see that thin line and that oddball metal. <laughs> that's a cast zinc, zinc carriage with steel pins pressed into it. So that's pretty cheap. We have black gears. And the lower stage... Which are hard to grip with these pliers. Much harder to grip. So I suspect that these are going to be a harder plastic. But nonetheless, both stages are plastic just because it has a very limited amount of torque that it can deliver. And of course, the planetary gears are, or excuse me, the ring gear is just this plastic housing. This thing is a, unfortunately, this thing is a bit cheesier than I expected. I think I will uh, pop open this motor case. I now that I get this open, I all of a sudden care less about it. So I'm gonna snap this apart. Shouldn't be too tough. I will use a hammer if I need to, but I'm thinking you can use brake spring pliers or a few other sets of pliers that are designed to spread apart where almost all pliers are designed to close together but you can do stuff something like this just put these pliers in there they actually fit in pretty nice these are some old uh, diamond usa ones wow that came apart much easier than i really expected there we are and second thing is i had assumed obviously inappropriately that those are snaps that were going to be in there there isn't any snaps it just has some plastic pegs down here a couple of steel roll pins and then as the battery tray goes in it kind of catches over the lip so it's actually using this cap in the battery tray to prevent the back half of the screwdriver from splitting apart as far as whoop there's our gear how the little button works is it's just reversing the polarity. It's just 
get this how they have it on here. Oh, those tabs are bent. I'm sure it's a friction contact, but all it's doing is taking these terminals and either attaching them this way or attaching them this way to get forward and reverse. And then it appears to be some type of friction fit. So we'll just get that. And then they bend the tabs of the motor itself to kind of hold the switch together. We'll straighten those guys out. And voila. Just a regular old DC brush motor. And then here's our switch. It's really pretty darn cheesy. I have to hold it like this. So when you're pressing the button, you're either... Probably part of the problem with power delivery is it's literally, as these... Well, you can't put it up. But as the motor terminals come in, they go through these two little slots. And when this black thing slides over... What's happening here is you can see that this one is touching that one and then the outer ring is touching that one. When you go the other direction, that one's touching the outer ring and then this terminal is touching the inner, essentially the inner ring. And that's how it's getting the forward and reverse. This is insane. This right here, if I can even get this thing apart, is absolutely the cheapest power switch I've ever seen. I don't think you could really get a whole lot cheaper than this thing here. That's for darn sure. If I can even get it apart here. Those are your terminals for your power switch. And this is the way you hold it together. Mastery of the ultimate cheap power switch. Wow. Anyway, I don't know how this video ended up being 12 minutes long. I think the only thing I'm going to keep out of this whole unit is it is kind of hard to find these little tiny steel roll pins so I'll go ahead and save both of those because every once in a while you can, I need some tiny roll pins and they're hard to find great place to find them the rest of this will go into recycling I really appreciate everybody who's been watching and subscribing and if you haven't subscribed please do I almost forgot Let's see if I can't get this is a weird this is a one-way washer. So he has these fingers, so it presses on and it locks in. So let's see if I can't. And many times, like in this case, these things can be real tough to get apart. I need a tougher screwdriver. I want to try to get this spindle apart for completeness of the teardown. Oh, that is a tough one. Oh, it just <laughs> flew around somewhere. Got that off. It appears that there's another washer there. And... Oh, that's interesting. So this is a... I don't really understand what's going on here. This little clip is the detent. Pop that out of there. Even as cheesy as it is, you can start to see even how something like this, a really cheesy alkaline electric screwdriver, still has a ton of parts. Okay, so this is being held into place. And it's moving these. That's what's engaging the lock. Free. Locked. Free. So there's going to be some dog teeth. I just know how you get the rest of this apart. It's even cheesier. What we can see is those plastic teeth. What they are is their teeth align with the planetary gear. And when you press it to the lock position, it engages the teeth on that lower carriage. And that's how it locks it into position. Out of all the things that are so cheesy on this screwdriver... It's actually a lot of surface area of engagement. It's all those teeth on the outer for all engaging with all the teeth on the inner. I mean, that's, you know, 40, 50 teeth. That's actually a pretty strong, simple, but actually a surprisingly strong design, even out of plastic, just because there's a huge amount of surface area in there. Looks like this spindle is a press fit in there, so I'll have to hit it with a hammer and punch. So the spindle was fed through the casing and then press fit into this 
uh, drive carriage. That's actually pretty stout. Put it in the socket and really hammered it. I actually got a pretty good dent going in the middle of it there. Wouldn't come apart. So that's the one piece that I couldn't re really get apart. Anyway, really appreciate everybody who's been watching and subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. Until next time, Caddis Maximus out.